Hi everyone, it's Andrew from Ant RC and I'm here to give you an exciting update on my plastic styrene card build for the CA30 which, just if you've missed the previous stuff, that's what I'm doing. So this is the CA30, well it's not, but it will be the CA30 truck, uh, but th this is the bit I'm building, the box for the back. What have I done to this point? Well, first of all, as you can see, I've tried to find some plans. So these are quite important uh, just to get a feel and maybe some proportions of how things are laid out. The What I've also done is had a look on YouTube for some video of these things. And there is a, a, a channel called Combat Crew and they've got a CA30 or a, a Zil 157 Russian version and they've got this thing on the back. So I've, I've tried to reflect how that looks against these measurements, uh, which obviously aren't tenth, aren't twelfth scale measurements, of course. But you know, I've tried to kind of round them up. Now, I'm taking a little bit of an artistic license with this because I don't think anyone's going to come along with a tape measure and start measuring it. And if they do, uh, they'll, they'll be measuring how far my boot uh, has gone up their backside. Um, but before I cut the plastic. I cut cardboard. Well, I cut paper first, if truth be told. I made the whole thing out of sheets of A4 to start with, um, but that was not really going to work. So I went uh, cut up some cereal boxes, as you can see. So I've made all the major panels out of card. And I have assembled them. This is the flatbed off the CA30, so this is going to form the base that way up. Um, and I have put these. And I'll put a, I think I've got a picture on my phone, I'll put a picture in the video so you can see the thing made out of card. Um, and that was a good exercise because it, it got me familiar with, for example, the height, how tall this was going to be um, off, off the truck. So I could put this on the truck and see how high it was going to sit. The CA30 is a small truck, it's a small cab, so it looks quite tall. But again, on my video reference material, that's how it looks. So it didn't frighten me greatly um, and it just allows you to think about things like the width of the card. You've got to remember that on your joints and your measurements um, that you're going to have a thickness of card to accommodate when you are buttoning things up. So there's a, it was a good interesting exercise doing, doing it out of card and I also made a mistake in some of the cuts I made so it allowed me to rectify that. Um, you know, the most it costs you is a box of cereals, right? So, the card was done, the whole thing was stood up and taped up as a, as a freestanding unit, and that was cool, so then it's time to move to the card, and like I say, with the card, it's just a case of, of, of scribing out um, the measurements. Um, you can cut with the scalpel. I was cutting with the knife first along the ruler, steel ruler, please, not a plastic one. And then I will go along with the scribing tool in the, in, the, in the groove the knife made. And the difference with uh, the two things, the knife doesn't, doesn't remove any material. Knife, a knife blade, if it's just like forms a scratch, it doesn't remove anything. It, it sort of digs a furrow, see? so it leaves a rough, a rough feel. Yeah? Um, the scriber cuts plastic out. So if I have a look here, you end up with this sort of thing, okay? You end up with strings, coils of, of plastic um, from the scriber. So it removes the material, creates a channel, and then you snap it, and, and, and jobs are good. Now the problem is, and the reason I have all this mess, is I've got, I've got this stuff all over the floor, I've had it in my feet, it's upstairs now, ay ay ay, was to do the windows. So let me let me do a zoom in. Let me get me get in close here, and I'll I'll talk you through how I did the windows. Okay, so I'm going to show you with the sides. These are the two uh, the other two longer sides with their windows cut. Now the they're going to sit a bit like this. Okay, or maybe the other way around. I'll show you. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, so they've each got three windows, and one side's got a big hole here. This hole, incidentally, is going to be for the battery. Um, so when it sits on the, on, the, on the flatbed, I'm going to have a door on here, I'm going to be able to open the door, slide the battery in, um, and, and slide the battery out for changes, okay? I don't think I'm going to need the same door on the other side, I think I'll be able to manage uh, just through the one side. We'll, we'll see, see about that. But to cut all these gaps and all these holes out, 
But once you've measured them and marked them all off, and most of my most of my things are, are covered in little marks, uh, which you can see are for the you know are measured out. Um, what I what I do to cut them out, I, I scribe round them, and then uh, and obviously this could be wrong. I'm sorry, there might be better ways of doing this out there, and I hope so. Put it in the comments if you know a better way. Um, but what I did was I, I used my um, hole making what do you call them? Counter, uh, whatever they call these things, to um, cut holes, cut circles in the area I want to cut out, and that allows me to get in there, and then I can cut, make lots of circles, and break it away, and then eventually take a set of pliers, and I would snip, snip it off. Okay, so you could snip away, and because of the seam, because you've cut, uh, cut the outline. That's where the plastic card snaps. So it's quite, it, it works reasonably well. And you can see there are lots of bits. There's, there's a big bit. Um, let me just make sure you can see that. Mm, don't know. But there's a piece there um, that I've cut. There's, there's the circles. And then I've just grabbed it and snapped it straight off. So there's a reasonably straight edge um, along the, the lower edge. Now that method is, no, is okay, but it does damage the plastic card, as I've discovered. Um, there, are, there are marks where it's snapped off, and I think obviously the thinner the card, the better this works. I think the thicker the card, the, the more problematic it will be. But I've basically nibbled away in doing so. I've taken chunks out of the, uh, the other side, if you like, the reverse side. So I had to decide early on which side was going to be the outer surface. So, um, this is the outer surface of this side, so this is going to be at the front, so, it, so this would be, you know, the cab would be there, okay, the cab would be at this side. So, on the outside is where I've marked the windows out with the knife, and I have at times forgotten, so I've now got large uh, score marks that I have to go back and fill in. And on the inside, which is the bit that you won't generally see, are where the chunks are missing after snapping the plastic card out. So these little strips, as I mentioned earlier, these were a nightmare because how thin they are with the windows cut in. And I must, and don't, for, these are all very rough as well, I have to say. None of, none of these um, windows and so on have been smoothed out. This is exactly how I did it last night. This is how I finished it. You can see the, um, that is with the inside surface here with all the chunks out of it. The, the, they, they need to, I'm going to file them all down and make sure they're, they're much squarer than they are now. But these were, yeah, these were difficult because it's all one sheet. It's a big sheet and I had to make a choice. Do I want to snap this thin section out and then try and cut the windows out because it would be, you know, quite delicate. I decided to do the windows first and then worry about snapping it. I'll put some pictures up. Um, I took some pictures last night of the score mark and me bending it and bending it and bending it and because it's such a long sheet you can't put even pressure down the sheet as you're bending it so it bends in the middle but not the edges and you stress you know, so it was, I was really expecting this to just snap somewhere uh, around the windows but fortunately I took my time did a little bit work to just work the joints back and forwards back and forwards and eventually it snapped cleanly-ish uh, certainly snapped without any damage so that was a thing. I had to. Uh, I was a bit of a nervy moment with these last night. So now I'm going to tidy this up a little bit, and then I'm going to put um, try and get some tape around this and put it on there, so you'll see it, and I'll see it for the first time made up, and we'll get to see just how well it fits. I'm, I'm to be honest with you, not greatly confident. All right, so <laughs> look at this. <laughs> Hey, well, you know what? I'm quite, I'm quite tickled that it actually um, can be made to look like the thing I intended. Um, yeah. The the one thing that I'm um, that I've, I've I've got wrong, that's not mince all words, is these three roof panels in terms of length. They actually sit in between the end panels. Um, I think I would have been happier with them resting on the side panels, on, on the end panels, do you know what I mean? So instead of them, without the tape, they just fall straight in the middle. 
Um, I would rather that they were another couple of millimeters longer on each end. The width, the thickness of these two side uh, end pieces. You know, you measure all this up and then you think, oh, well, actually, it's going to have to be another three mil long on each end and cut it like that. And I think I've either forgotten to do it or I, whatever, you know, the end result is. Um, they just nicely slot inside. <laughs> Rats! Now, um, what's next? Next up is... Um, uh, that's not the right word. Where, where are my plans? Got a plan, right? Have I got here? It is always the last one, isn't it? So this is a, a blown-up version of the side, and what I want to do is I'm going to then start making some window surrounds. I did have one out of the cross truck floating around, um, but I wasn't organised enough to find it. Um, I'm going to make things like the door and, and access panels and hatches and things. Before I make the whole thing, I'll, I'll make them and fit them on these panels when I can lie them flat on the table. So when it goes together properly, it's going to be, each, each of the panels will be detailed with most of the end detail on them. Um, inside, I'm going to have to do some reinforcement. So some of the scrap bits I've got left, uh, I will be turning into braces. Um, I'll probably put a brace down the, down the middle here, under the roof, and I will uh, undoubtedly put some cross braces in. Um, I'm going to try and build a, a rudimentary interior. Uh, it, this would be, I'm going to say, an ambulance uh, kind of first aid uh, station. So it might have beds. I'm going to build some kind of, like, put that, you know, on the other side, on the inside, like, like, uh, like desks or... or raised platforms that they've put a stretcher on you know which will then hide some of the braces because you're going to be able to see a reasonable amount through this so i'm going to have something just to hide the braces and maybe the battery and the wiring that might be inside it so it'll have a rudimentary interior but nothing nothing uh no beds and tvs and stuff like like the uh the mc8 one has so yeah there we are that's where i am it's a bit long wasn't it probably gone on a bit sorry about that guys but uh you know there you go i'm quite excited it actually looks like the finished thing it looks like a real thing so for my first uh, styrene build um i'm going to take that oh incidentally it doesn't fit uh, the bed entirely and do you know why that is because that's a sheet of a4 the styrene and the bed is you know eight millimeters longer than a sheet of a4 so i'm going to live with that um yeah, I'm going to live with that. All right, thanks, guys. Catch you soon.